Hi. Often you come across people are times being so confused in case that they need to make a decision between projects. If in case I have to make decisions between different investments, I have a solution for you today to make the decision whether it's a right project to me or not or it's a right investment to me or not. So what's it I'm talking about? I am talking on a very very interesting concept called internal rate of return. So today's topic we're going to learn what is internal rate of return, its applicability and the inclusion. It's also of pivotal importance in case we want to learn on our own or we want to calculate using the excel function what are the facts I must know before I get into internal rate of return calculations. Well, all said and done, don't you think we also need to understand the advantages? Yes, indeed, I am going to also take you through the key advantages. And most important, I am also going to show you calculations how to do using the Excel function to derive at the internal rate of return. So, what's internal rate of return? Friends, internal rate of return is another a very important metric that can be used to determine whether or not a company must invest its resources in a project. Well, before we undertake any new project or an investment, it is natural to do a cost-profit analysis of the same and of course the same helps the concerned investor whether it could be you or me, anyone for that matter be it an individual or a company can understand how it compares with other projects. The internal rate of return is one such measure in the broad realm of profitability ratios. Well, now that we understood the meaning of the internal rate of return, it's also of utmost importance for us to know what's its applicability and the inclusions. IRR or the internal rate of return is referred to as economic rate of return, a discounted cash flow rate of return or the rate of return. It's a discount rate that is supposed to equate the net present value of all the cash flows. Now what do I mean by cash flows? The inflow and the number of outflows. From a specific outlay to zero and the example I shall show at a later phase of the presentation. Alternatively, it can also be understood as the estimated compounded annual growth rate of a particular cost. We call internal rate of return as effective interest in the context of savings and loans. Note, IRR or the internal rate of return does not incorporate or consider the environmental factors such as the interest rate or inflation and that is the same refers to the internal. So far we have understood the meaning of internal rate of return, why an investor or a decision maker before we consider a project should think about the internal rate of return. We have also understood the applicability and the inclusion. Now it's a time for us to understand how do we calculate the internal rate of return using the Excel function. Friends, it's of pivotal importance for us to know these six key elements before we get into calculating internal rate of return using the Excel function. Number one and most important, the values argument must contain at least one positive value that's representing the income which you're going to receive at the end or on maturity and one negative value which represents your outlay. The outlay represents the outflow, the money which goes out of your pocket and the positive value shows the money which you are going to receive at the end of the term or on maturity. The second important factor which we need to consider only numbers in the value argument are processed. Text, logical values or empty cells are completely ignored. So we should only be entering the numbers over there 
nothing beyond. And you'll learn that in a while. The third and most important aspect which we need to keep in mind to calculate the internal rate of return, the cash flows do not necessarily have to be even, but they must occur at regular intervals. For example, monthly, quarterly, annually. Fourth and most important aspect which we need to remember when we calculate the IRR using Excel function, in all calculations, its implicitly assume that there are equal time intervals between all cash flows. So it's assumed that there are equal time intervals between all cash flows. Again, we'll understand this with an example. Note, all cash flows occur at the end of a period. Profits generated by the project are reinvested at the internal rate of return. This is applicable in case of even an investment. And IRR in Excel interprets the order of cash flows based on the order of values. The values should be always in chronological order. So far, we understood the meaning of internal rate of return and why one should consider the internal rate of return before taking the decisions either on a project or multiple projects or on your respective investments. Also, we understood its applicability and the inclusions and prior to this we understood the key facts one has to remember whilst we get into calculating the IRR using the Excel function. So here is the time for us to now understand what are the key advantages of internal rate of return. IRR is becoming a popular method of computing returns especially in portfolio management and mutual funds in addition to the projects or the decision makers while they take a decision whether it's the right project or I shouldn't take the decision to go ahead with this project this is the actual internal rate of return expected where there are several annuities involved with different times and periods there are X number of outflows and Y is going to be your inflow some of the key advantages this technique gives equal importance to all the cash flows. We just need to identify the point at which the present value of cash inflow is equal to present value of cash outflow. What do I mean by that? Someone has taken a decision that he is going to pay X amount over a period of let's say 10 years and on the 11th year he is expected to earn are written against the money which he has paid over a period of 10th year. So this becomes my cash outflow which I paid over a period of 10 years and the cash inflow which is going to come to me on the 11th year. It's a good method of capital budgeting. The IRA method is considered more popular and of course straightforward. IRR can be used to rank different prospective projects and project with the highest IRR would be considered the best. Well, you may have lot many prospective projects with you, but IRR can be a blessing in disguise for you to take a decision should you go ahead or not. Having said that, this method, or the IRR, considers the time value of money and is therefore more realistic than accounting rate of written or the error method. Well, so far we understood what is internal rate of return and how it can actually add value to someone's decision before they consider a project or an investment. We've also understood its applicability and inclusions. And most important, before we get into Excel calculations or how do we calculate internal rate of return using the Excel function. Some of the key facts which we need to know about internal rate of return are the aspects one need to remember. Also, we understood the key advantages of internal rate of return. Now, we will get into learning calculations of internal rate of return using the Excel function. There are very simple steps rather you call them three important steps number one 
engine cash flow into the spreadsheet. Keep in mind that this initial investment has to be negative number. That means the outflow, the money which goes out of your pocket towards either an investment or a project has to be in the negative value. So you should be showing it could be like minus 3 lakhs, minus 1 lakh, minus 10,000, whatever could be your outflow. Second and most important, subsequent cash flow values of each period. That means in the sales directly under the initial investment amount, type the cash values. Say for example, you're going to pay it for the next 10 years. Across 10 years, all the values has to be in the negative value. Third, how do we derive at the internal rate of return? How do we instruct Excel to calculate the IRR? It's quite very, very simple. To instruct the Excel to calculate IRR, Type in the function, the command is equal to IRR and here in fact I have chosen the cell C1 colon C15 or C15 is a cell which carries the amount or which reflects or depicts the amount which is going to come to me at the end of the term or on maturity and just you need to enter and you get the IRR in percentage form. Now it's the time for us to learn how to calculate internal rate of return using the Excel function. Friends, note the Excel IRR function returns the internal rate of return for a series of periodic cash flows represented by both negative and positive numbers. In all calculations, it's implicitly assumed that there are equal time intervals between all cash flows and all cash flows occur at the end of the period. So while we move into learning to calculate internal rate of return using the Excel function, the first step, keep the initial cash flow into the spreadsheet. Keep in mind that this initial investment has to be a negative number using the example which I've shown you in the screen. Type minus one lakh into C4 cell of the spreadsheet. Now, the subsequent cash flow values of each period, how do we enter that? In the cells directly under the initial investment amount, type cash flow values, for example, if your initial cash flow is in cell C4, type the following cash flows into cell C5, C6, C7. Likewise, I have entered 1 lakh in the negative number till up to C14. Payment expected in this example, I have captured in C15, serial number 12. Now, once we have both the outflow and the inflow in place, it's quite easy to calculate IRR. All that we need to do is instruct now the Excel to help you to calculate IRR by applying a formula. So, to instruct Excel to calculate IRR, type in the function command is equal to, if you refer to C16, I have captured, you know, is equal to IRR, open the bracket, C4, that means my outflow started from C4, and the inflow, that's the money which I received in C15, close the bracket, and into the C16, just enter, and you get the IRR. Note, the inflow should be mentioned in a positive number. So in this example, against the outflow of 1 lakh over 11 months are, you know, the years, you would receive 20 lakhs and your internal rate of return is 10%. Congratulations! Now that you have learned how to calculate internal rate of return, 
It's quite easy for you to now compare between your investments, are the projects you want to take, are the decision you want to make. All right. Here I've shown two examples. An example one where you have paid one lakh over a period of eleven years that translate to eleven lakhs against which on the twelfth year, right, or the twelfth month, you must have you have received in this example twenty lakhs. So this translate to 10% internal rate of return. Whereas in the example two, against the same 11 lakhs of outflow, you did receive only 15 lakhs, and that translate to only 5%. Now you would know for sure that between these two projects or between these two investments, investment one or the project one makes more sense because your internal rate of return is high. Congratulations, you have learned now how to calculate internal rate of return. Thank you and a happy learning.